عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم أما بعد Tonight's session is for all of you to pay attention and keep in the place that you're in right now clean. That's one of the instructions from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi قال إمام النووي رحمه الله تعالى في رضي الصالحين كتاب الأمور المنهية عنها The Book of the Prohibited Actions حديث نمبر 1693 قال باب النهي عن البصاق في المسجد والأمر, والأمر بإزالته من He says prohibition of spitting in the masjid Some of them say wait a second man what if I get overwhelmed what am I going to do now Keep running out of the masjid go to the exit door Let's understand the hadith properly first قال عن أنس رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال البصاق في المسجد خطيئة وكفارتها دفنها متفق عليه The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said in this hadith Spitting in the masjid is a sin and the expiation for that is, to, uh, is that uh, uh, the spittle should be, should be buried in, in the earth or in the ground Allah al-Bukhari al-Muslim Okay, some of us might say, wait a second, but we have carpet right now What do we do? Tariq, we have to keep some uh, open spaces in the masjid, يعني? Of course not. Imam al Nawa rahimahullah, explains that. قال, والمراد بدفنها, what is, it, what, what is meant by burying it in the ground? قال, إذا كان المسجد تراباً أو رملاً أو نحوه. If the ground or the floor in the masjid was sand, it was rocks, it was maybe earth, in this case, yeah, that's what it is. قال, فيواريها تحت التراب. In this case, you bury it under the sand. So we just kind of pick, take, pick some of that sand and put it on top and cover it. قال أبو المحاس الرويان رحمه الله تعالى هو من علماء الشافعية one of the great scholars of Shafi'i school. قال في البحر وقيل المراد بدفنها إخراجها من المسجد. He said some they say no, you're gonna have to pick it up somehow with the with the earth that comes with it and throw it out of the masjid altogether. And قال أما إذا كان المسجد مبلطا أو مجصصا if the masjid was tiled maybe marble or whatever قال فدلكها عليه بمداسه أو بغيره أو فدلكه عليه بمداسه أو بغيره كما يفعله كثير من الجهال فليس ذلك بدفن because if you, if it was already uh, uh, you know uh, tiled you're not gonna go and, and, and rub it with your foot or with your shoes thinking that this is gonna be okay it's gonna bury it it's not gonna go anywhere. He goes, this is wrong. فَلَيْسَ ذَلَكِ بَدَفِنْ This is not fulfilling the Prophet ﷺ instruction. بَلْ زِيَارَةٌ فِي الْخَطِيئَةِ It's actually adding maybe more to the sin because now you're spreading that, that, uh, 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 that filth. وَتَكْثِيرٌ لِلْقَدْرِ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ And expanding that filth into the masjid. وَعَلَى مَنْ فَعَلَ ذَلِكَ أَنْ يَمْسَحَهُ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ بِثَوْبِهِ أَوْ بِيَدِهِ أَوْ غَيْرِهِ أَوْ يغسله. If anyone does that, should remove it by whatever means. Whether it's your clothes, your hand, whatever, just pick it up and take it away from the masjid. There's another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in 1694, and Aisha ﷺ, رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رأى في جدار القبلة مخاطن أو بساقا أو نخاما فحكه متفق عليه. The Prophet ﷺ, he saw in the qibla, in a direction of the qibla of the masjid, he saw some spittle or snot or sperm. And it was kind of sticking to the wall of the Qibla, in the direction of the Qibla. And the Prophet ﷺ, he did not, didn't like that, so he scratched it off. Al-Hayth rawahu al-Bukhari wa Muslim. What does that mean? And how do you explain this hadith? Now, obviously, we understand the dangers of spreading, of course, you know, spatters all over the place. Just by sneezing, what's going to happen? You're going to infect tons of people around you. Imagine if people spit, you know, right and left. Or just kind of like... Whatever, if they were overwhelmed with phlegm and they just kind of spit it out somewhere. In the, imagine if this would be the case. Why so? Because the measure is considered a public place, right? So people come from all over the place. And, and if someone is sick, someone is ill, would probably mess up the whole congregation altogether. So this is need to be treated very well. Now, how? What we heard from the Prophet ﷺ in these two hadith over here seems to be instruction that might suit the time of the Prophet ﷺ. But in our time, what do we do? What we need to do is clean it in the way that we usually do it in our time. If that requires carpet cleaning, if that requires whatever wall, you know, kind of uh, uh, disinfectants or sprays or this and that, whatever that needs to be treated, it should be. Now what about you if you're, one who's, you're praying right now in the masjid and you're overwhelmed? So what do I do in this case? 
See, the Prophet وسلم, he instructed the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala, he went time actually, as a matter of fact, he said, um, if anyone is overwhelmed in your salah, you're overwhelmed and you cannot, you know, kind of control the phlegm or the spatter. In this case, what do I do? So the Prophet وسلم, said, if you had to, then spit it out towards your left. It means under, uh, to the ground on your left side. If someone is praying next to you on the left side, then to your right side. If someone is praying to you, towards you in the next, you know, uh, to the right side, then what do you do? Between your feet. Keep in mind, when was that a jama'ah? At the time of the Prophet وسلم, when back then they used to pray what? When the masjid was furnished with what? With sand and, 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 yeah, and pebbles, and people used to pray with their shoes on. Don't you ever do it over here. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'll let Tariq go after you. <laughs> and we have the cameras, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna basically get to know who you are, right? Don't do it over here. So what do I do in this case? I'm overwhelmed right now. So you can reach with your hand into your pocket and get a napkin. I hope that you guys carry napkins with you. So you grab your, it's okay. Move your hand, put it in your pocket, and get it out, and then take care of it yourself. Okay, wait a sec, what if I don't have any? Can I search my other pocket? And then no, maybe the upper pocket. I don't know, maybe in the back. So does that break my salah? As long as you're working and keeping, alhamdulillah, the situation under control, then you should be fine. But if you're gonna be right now checking, you know, everything all over around, just break your salah, go to the bathroom, spit it out, and just deal with it and come back again to, to continue salah. Now, if you're in salah, that's actually a, a, a real scenario. If you're in salah and you feel that overwhelmed, you wanna spit it out. I don't know, I don't have, I, I'm looking for a napkin, I can't find any napkins. Is it okay for my neighbor next to me to hand me a napkin? <laughs> as long as it's clean. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. What about for the sisters? Are they allowed to go all the way down to the purse and start, you know, flipping, you know, all the, mashallah, the compartments to see where the napkins are? If it's going to take that long time, obviously, then you break your salah, take care of it, and then start over. And if you can join the imam, you start over. But for those who will just immediately pick that, that napkin and just take care of it, you continue with your salah normally, inshallah ta'ala. What if I don't have anything? I don't have napkins, my neighbors don't have napkins. We're now st stuck in the situation. What do we do in this case? The Prophet وسلم, he gave us actually extreme measure. Today, some people might feel a little bit, um, I, I don't know if I can do this. Well, it's up to you. But that's at least is one way of dealing with the situation, such an urgent matter like this. The Prophet وسلم, he says, hakada. He says, if you had to, as a matter of fact, the hadith has a story behind it. The story behind it is the Prophet وسلم, when he came to the masjid one day and he saw um, some sort of a snar or whatever actually in the qibla. He got very upset, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He got so upset. He goes, how dare you do this when, you, when you're facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Would you dare spitting in someone's face? He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you talk to them? If, you, if you're already talking to your friend, would you dare spit in their face or in the direction of their face? You won't. He goes, how dare you do this to the, uh, uh, in the masjid facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like this? And then in another narration, a woman from the Ansar radiallahu ta'ala anha, she grabbed something and she started actually kind of taking care of it. And she removed it from the, from the wall of the masjid. The other narration, the Prophet ﷺ one day was walking and he liked to carry with him al-urjun. Urjun is the, the, the date uh, uh, branch. When it dries, it becomes more like a, like a cane. So he's walking with one of those in his hand وسلم, And as he was coming in, he saw that in, the, in front of the masjid, or this in the qibla. He got so upset about it. And he said, how you do this and so and so. So he, with his hand وسلم, he scratched it off the wall and cleaned it. The story of the Ansari woman, what she did radiallahu anha, when she removed that actually sparrow from the wall, قالت, ثم جعلت مكانه خلوقا. And then in the same spot, she brought some perfume, and she just basically kind of like wiped it with that perfume to clean it and, and make it smell better. So from that, the ulama, they say that it's sunnah, that you keep the place clean, and you spray it with nice, beautiful perfumes. Of course, as long as it doesn't cause people allergy, uh, allergic reactions, obviously. But keep it clean and keep it smelling nice, inshallah, to baraka wa ta'ala. So the Prophet ﷺ, then he said to the people, if, if any one of you was overwhelmed with phlegm or want to spit out and we have nothing else, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he grabbed his sleeve like this, and then he wiped his mouth and his nose, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like that, actually kind of pretending. And then he folded inside, and he said, just do it like this, and then go and take care of it after salah. Now that's an emergency situation, Jama'ah, right? 
So in this case, if you don't have a long sleeve, <laughs> what do you do? Grab your neighbor's sleeve? <laughs> sister's, sister's hijab next to you, <laughs> right? No, you're not going to do that. But grab your shirt if you can and take care of it. If you had to, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never put you in this position, yani. But at least not to do it in the masjid. And if you had to leave, go to the bathroom again and, and clean yourself and take care of it. That should be better, inshallah, wa ta'ala. So remember to keep the place clean, not just because if it's a hygiene issue. It's also, subhanAllah, etiquette, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you dare to keep your house that dirty and filthy and spit it all over the place, then I don't know what to tell you. But these are the house, this is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Guests of the more merciful come over here. They deserve to keep the place, to keep the place clean for them. And we are all here, not guests actually, we are the hosts over here. So make sure to keep your message clean, inshallah. Any question, Jama'ah? Yes? What about the mirrors? Might the door in front where, you know, like the people, they come uh, outside the Outside the <coughs> Very good point. What about the courtyard outside of the masjid? You know, once, if you, once you leave the rotunda over here, you have, alhamdulillah, paved place. So you have, you know, stones and tiles and so forth. So is it okay since we're already outside of the masjid to spit around over here and there? Well, again, if you go far away from the people where you spit in the ground or maybe in, in the grass area, still people come around and it's not going to be healthy if people walk around and people play around and so on and so on. So as far as you can if you had to, as far as you can if you had to. Obviously, it's better for you to contain it with a napkin, but if you had to do it outside, then it should be fine, inshallah ta'ala. Yes. Okay. So, very good point. What about the Prophet Sallallahu hadith when he said, if the shaitan distracts you in your salah, then spit on your left side three times. And say, A'udhu Billah, Sameer, Alim, Shaitan, Rajim, Minham, Zinaf, Kiyo, Nafateh. That you see creepers with Allah from the shaitan, right? From the whispers of the shaitan. How can I combine these two hadith? Well, the hadith about spitting to the left, it's actually blowing, blowing dry spatter. You're not going to spit on the person next to you and shower him yani, with your sperm. Instead of just, you know, dry sperm, that's what I mean, just like this. That's it. And obviously, if someone is next to you, after salah, explain to them what you did, all right? Otherwise, they're not going to yani, have issues with that afterwards. Wallahu a'ala. Naam. Khair, inshallah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashhiru alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Make sure to keep the masjid clean, Jamaat. Jazakumullah khair.